you know, what we see now, again, at these elite schools, there's roughly, what, 60 or 65 of them in the, in the five conferences, is the move towards paying what they're calling uh, the full cost of attendance, which is basically uh, involves giving the players an additional couple of thousands of dollars, and maybe up to $5,000. And the NCAA and Mark Emmert have basically signed off on this for these, for these conferences. Um, I have absolutely no issue with that. Um, I think clearly the players are the ones who are responsible for, um, for all of this money, so why not give them that money? What I think about, though, is down the line. Um, I don't think we're quite at a tipping point, but I think we're getting toward a tipping point where the pressure to pay the players even more, to move the model even a little bit farther off the edges of the campus or to the edges of the campus, where it becomes an even more of a semi-pro model. And again, we're talking about football, although I think you could probably throw men's basketball into this as well. And what happens is I don't think the players in a few years are going to be satisfied just with a couple of thousand dollars. I think they're going to look around. They're, you know, some of them are quite smart, and they're, they're at least smart enough to see where the money is and how much is there and what the coaches are being paid and ask why shouldn't they be getting more. So what I worry about a little bit is that the pressure to pay, pay the players even – more significant sums of money, or possibly even to go to a competitive marketplace where you're bidding for, say, a great quarterback in California or a great linebacker in western Pennsylvania, and you're bidding up the price that you're actually going to pay for that player. I mean, it's not impossible that we will get to that model. But as you move to that model, there are all kinds of consequences. The current model begins to unravel. You have lots of tax issues. Um, is that player then considered an employee? If he's an employee, do you, does he need to pay taxes on that? Are you going to stash all the money in some kind of stipend um, where you get it at the end of the season? If you're paying a player significant money, more than just a few thousand dollars on top of the scholarship, are you finally admitting that college football, tr at, as it's practiced at these elite schools, truly is a large for-profit or commercial business. And if you admit that, do you then say, okay, we're going to pay taxes. So you lose this umbrella of tax protection that exists in the current model where we still pretend that uh, these sports are more educational experiences than they are commercial experiences.